Welcome back, everybody. Today, we are going to be painting up a terrain piece and a miniature. I have chocolate in my peanut butter. This is a Baba Yaga's Hut by Print Your Monsters, a 3D print. And this is going to be a unique opportunity to put some quality painting into a building, something that I and I think most of you out there rarely do. And we're going to do this fairly easy because we are going to be employing a whole bunch of paint stains. So grab your paint brushes and follow along. We're going to begin with the roof and we are beginning with a thin coat or a thick wash, however you want to call it, of flat brown. And just want to get it in the nooks and crannies of all the little shingles. We don't need perfect coverage here because... In the next step, we are going to be applying a heavy paint stain wash, basically a very, very thick paint wash, all over the shingles. So this is going to darken our flat brown to a nice kind of slightly greenish brown color. And this is going to give us some shade in between the shingles. And this wash is going over everything. So this is shading the roof as well as prepping the walls, the doors, and all that business. Now we have our undercoat placed and we have our stain giving us our shade on our roof. Now is time to actually start painting the shingles and I'm going to be painting them individually. This could be easily dry brushed, but painting them individually allows me to add a bit more variety to the shingle colors. For the shingles that I painted with our previous mixture, I am highlighting with red leather. Simply remove the flat brown from the equation. And our paint here is a little bit on the thick side because I do want to add some texture to the shingles. Give them a little bit of a rough appearance, make them more prominent. And if you noticed in the previous step, I was using a rather large wedge shaped brush. And in this step, I switched over to a number one or a number two, I can't remember exactly. So we are getting a smaller pattern as we paint. Our final highlight is Vallejo Model Color Light Brown. And you can see this is rather an extreme highlight. I don't have a smooth transition here. Doing that A, because I want the texture to really show, and B, this is basically a, a fantasy house. It belongs to a Russian fairy tale witch. So I'm going a little bit more extreme on my colors, kind of not going for realism, going more for fantasy. For our second batch of shingles, once again going back to our flat brown, this time instead highlighting it by adding a flat earth process here is exactly the same as the first round. We are just using different colors to add more variety to the roof. It may be hard to tell, but I'm actually painting a pattern here. I'm trying to keep the colors fairly close together, or at least in small chunks. So three or four shingles, the same color that are touching each other, then maybe an odd one here and there. So the colors are grouped, so we just don't have utter chaos of colors on the roof. There is a pattern there, a very rough one, a very light one, but it is there. And then we're finishing off by adding some beige, once again going extreme on our highlights. And there is a third color shingle that I did add in another shade of brown, which I'm skipping because twice is already repetitive enough. And 
And then we finish up our roof with a heavy glaze of model color black green mixed with glaze medium to give us some extra dry time so we can blend away any hard edges if necessary. And this is going in not every single shingle, but I do want to give the appearance of moisture trapped in the wooden shingles and algae or whatever growing in their moss. And once again, going with a brighter color than I normally would to invoke more of a fantasy feel. For the walls, I am using green gray with a little bit of olive brown added to darken it. And much like with the roof, this is being applied very sloppily uh, in a slightly thin manner. I don't have to cover up every single nook and cranny. We're going to take care of that in a later step. I just want a really good undercoat. And even the color that we're using right here, right now, is not super important because of the paint stain we're going to use next. So much like on the roof, applying a heavy paint stain wash on the sides of the building, you can see how thick our wash mixture is on the palette there. This time using olive brown mixed with a little black. And you can see how dark our green gray color is getting now. And we can just slap this on and we're gonna clean it up in the next step. Just make sure we get every single nook and cranny. That's the most important thing right now. Now because our green gray is so heavily stained, we simply can't just use green gray once again to highlight back up to our base coat. We have to come up with a new mixture. So in this case, I'm going by experience, trying to mix up a color that will highlight the color I currently have on the walls, plus add all the colors that I want at this time. Because we're play painting wood, I want a little bit of brown in there, but I want it faded, so I'm adding some gray, and also to go with our green theme, adding a little green as well. The highlights get a little bit easier, concentrating more on our pale green color. I just wanted to add a little bit of brown to the wood, not a whole bunch, so we don't have to use it in every step. And if you notice, once again, we are using the appropriate brush for the job, using that larger wedge-shaped flat brush for our first coat so we can get broad brush strokes. And now I'm trying to paint the top or bottom of each slat, so switching over to a much smaller number two round. very good example of contrast here as we do our final highlight with our Russian uniform and more beige added. See, I'm highlighting for the most part the tops of all the planks, which is right next to that bottom dark line from the plank above it. So we have very light color next to very dark color, basically a line of white and a line of black. That's what makes all our little planks pop because the white frames the black and the black frames the white. So, contrast. For the center ridge going down the roof, I wanted to make that tile, and we're using hull red, a little bit on the thin side, and we are not applying a shade layer here because we already have the shade that we need from all the paint stains that we did. So I can leave that in the recesses and just apply our hull red, and then add some tan to that for our highlights. I'm not entirely sure if a roof like this would have tile in the center and then wood shingles all around it, but that's the colors that I wanted. Sorry, I'm not an expert in Russian fantasy architecture. The last major portion of the house to do are all the more natural looking wood and logs. For this, once again, employing our paint stain, military green and black, and this is going over some shade of brown. I honestly do not remember because it doesn't matter exactly what color brown we are using. What matters is what the final results are gonna be. Mm. 
once again, I'm going by eye trying to determine what color I need to highlight the results of our undercoat and heavy paint stain. This time going with German camo medium brown with a little bit of military green added. Adding some desert yellow for the highlights and two important things to notice here. First of all, I am painting with texture so the paint is thicker and you can basically see the brush strokes. And that feels very appropriate because we are painting natural logs. And I didn't do it on the wood planks because it is possible to do too much texture. So we have the flat wood planks so the piece doesn't end up looking too busy. Second thing to note, because we are painting everything as if it were unpainted wood, meaning like the walls of the house are not painted, we've been using brown for everything, but I made a point of using different shades of brown on each different area of the house. So we went more reddish brown with the roof, we went more gray green color with the walls, and now we're going more yellow with the logs. So they all look individual despite all of them being some sh uh, sort of shade of brown and all of them having a green wash to them as well. So there's colors that are tying them together, but then there's also colors that separate them. For the greenery on the house, and for those of you who don't like to mix your paints, just using three paints uh, individually, all straight out of the bottle, First, we are base coating with deep green just to make sure every leaf is covered and then picking out individual leaves with uniform green and then highlighting leaves, not even not every single leaf, uh, but several of them with escorpina green to give it a little bit of variety. So once again, no layering here, just dotting on paint, easy thing to do. And I did hit it with a very thin black ink wash uh, once completed off camera. For the windows, we are once again using our green gray, but this time I'm mixing with English uniform. So we are starting off with a different color, slightly different color than what we used on the sides of the house. And then this time we are going to apply two different paint stains. First going with olive brown because I want to brown the wood as well as darken it. And then we're gonna follow that up with a green wash. Once again, we need to put our green into our wood. And you can see here, just by adding two different washes over our undercoat, what a wonderful nuance of colors we have going on on this simple little piece. We have greens, we have browns, uh, we have that original kind of soft brown grayish color that we started off with. And it's all just done by slapping on some washes. Very easy stuff. We did a very soft wood grain pattern on the logs on the hut. Uh, this time we're going to do a bit more of a hard edge, a heavy wood grain pattern. Going back to our original English uniform in green gray that we started off with, and I'm just trying to draw some lines here. I'm doing it fairly rough, it doesn't have to be perfect. I want to keep them a little bit wide, uh, but just little squiggles essentially going along the grain of the wood. So we have our wood grain crudely placed right now, and now we want to start to define it with our highlights. Adding a little bit more green gray to our previous mix, basically trying to paint inside the lines that we did previously to sharpen them up, uh, get a little bit more contrast there. And then after this step, I'm going to mix up a different mixture, basically eliminating the English uniform and replacing that with desert yellow so we get even a lighter color. 
and still following the guides of highlighting. So we are working our way towards the edges, but you can really start to see that wood grain pattern popping through. Then to give our wood grain even more definition, we go back with a darker color and basically in between the lines that we defined with our highlights, uh, we paint the darker color, much like with the slats on the side of the house. It gives us more contrast, so our wood grain lines pop. For the bones on the sides of the house, I went for a variety of colors. Not all of them were painted a rocky sand. I just wanted to make mention of, basically all I had to do was dry brush them, or in case of some of the larger bones, uh, base coat them and then add white or whatever to highlight them. Didn't have to really do any shading because of all the paint stains that we've used throughout this process. The bones are already shaded. There's green, there's brown in those recesses. So all I have to do is apply the base coat and the highlights. For the roots and vines, I believe I base coated those with some Vallejo model color beige brown color. Not that important as long as we get a brown color. But once again, breaking out our very dark brown green wash putting around the sides of the vines, a little bit thinner this time, this isn't a paint stain, because I basically want definition so the roots don't get lost in the shingles. And then just doing a normal highlight on them seemed a little odd, and I decided to go for more of a stipple pattern. And we're using Desert Yellow, which is a very light color considering our base coat and wash colors, but when you are stippling, remember, uh, you want more contrasting colors so you get more definition and more texture out of the stipple. Next, it's time for some window pane. At the moment, I am putting on a somewhat thin layer of Vallejo Game Color Scrupulous Brown. You can see I have blotches of white in the center of the window. The reason for that is so the center is much brighter where the paint's going over the white, and then around the edges of the frame, it's going to be darker because it's going over the undercoat there. That's there from painting the rest of the window. We'll continue to highlight towards the center of each pane, starting off with light orange and deep yellow, and then to this I will add a little bit of white for the dead center of each one. This is basically my same method for painting a fire source, like a torch or something like that, and decided to use it here for the windows because we have all these dark muted colors on the outside and on the inside of the house. Uh, basically, I didn't want like it to look like there's a light inside the house. I wanted these windows kind of look more like eyes, you know, like something's glowing very bright in the house. So that's why we are painting each window like it's its own light source. A little bit of fantasy thrown in. After painting the last few remaining odds and ends on the house, the final thing to do is to add just a little bit more green to go with our mossy motif. So some thinned dark green, fairly heavy glaze to go over our relatively dark colors, uh, mostly put on the wooden sides of the house. Here and there, basically wherever I want color, trying to keep it in the recesses where things would be more moist and moss or what have you would be more likely to grow. Bet you forgot this thing is supposed to have feet. This is one area on the model that we are not going to be using the paint stain because I want the feet to be very bright and colorful and stand out from the rest of the house. Starting off with a coat of our orange-brown parasite brown color, 
and then rather than using the wash I am just gonna hit the deep recesses all those little cracks in the feet with a thin coat of charred brown I initially started to carefully layer my highlights onto the feet until I got to the second layer and said screw it. Dry brushing is actually much more effective here because of the texture that we have on the foot. So a little bit of filthy brown and a little bit of elf skin tone added to our initial scruffulous brown. Just a heavy dry brush and it's pretty much done right there. The only thing added after that was a mix of hull red and parasite brown. This was to uh, pick up on some of the little pimples, dots, whatever they are, just to give a little bit more detail to the foot. And then also I used the exact same mixture thinner to apply a little bit of a glaze here and there, mainly where the foot meets the feathery drumstick portion up above. Last thing to do after flat varnishing the model is to apply a little bit of gloss for our glass windows using our OG Pledge Floor Polish for that. Did about three coats entirely because I wanted a little bit of depth in the windows and because they're framed it holds the polish in very well. And that's it. And there we have one completed Baba Yaga's hut. This is what I like to call low dexterity painting because as you just seen, we didn't use any very precise application of paint where you need a magnifying glass or precisely super thinned layers. Now, what did we use instead? We used a whole bunch of very sloppy paint washes and some dry brushing and some relatively easy to do texturing. I've been having a whole bunch of fun lately experimenting with the paint stain technique, trying different color combinations. What we used here was fairly mundane, nothing too extreme, but I played around with some very extreme colors and got some very interesting, beautiful results, which I'm sure I will cover sometime in the future. And if you want to see that, I recommend you stick around, subscribe, support, and all that good stuff. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. There are girls here! Actual girls!